first question that I actually have today is from a lady called Jessica Masego. And Jessica says, please explain more on assets and bases and conjugate pairs. Now remember, when we are doing assets and when we are doing bases, the reverse of that can also be an asset or a base. But then we don't call it an asset or a base, we call it a conjugate asset or a conjugate base. Now something to remember, in, in a way on how you can actually identify whether something is, a, is an asset or is a base, we go back to some theory. So we learned that we have a person called Arenas' theory, we also have a Laurie Brownstead or Brownstead-Laurie theory. Then these people actually help us identify when is something an asset, when is something a base, and this is because of the same things that happen. So for an example, if I look at this one, if we start with Arenas' theory, now Jessica, I'm gonna help you with your question, but I wanna show you where, where it comes from. So the first theorist that we actually use who helps us know when something is an acid or when something is a, as a base, theory. So what he says about acids, with acids, Arenas' theory says, an acid is a substance it is a substance that produces, and you're going to see every time you have to identify the conjugate um, pairs, we go back to this theory. Hydrogen ions, which are H+, plus, right? Or another one, or taking it further, hydronium ions. Hydronium hydronium ions, and remember, when we talk about hydronium, it's the H3O plus. And this, when, do, when does this happen? When it dissolves, when it dissolves in water, right? So that's what Arenas' theory said. Another person, let me just actually also do the base one, then I don't have to um, do it vice versa. Well, Arenas also says, guys, for us to identify a base, and he says a base is a substance. It is a substance that produces. Now, in this case, it's not hydronium ions, but it's hydroxide. Hydroxide ions. And this is OH minus. And this is when it is dissolved, when dissolved in water. Now, another guy who works with him is another theory which we call the Lowry Bronsted theory. Now, guys, my advice to you and with all my children, you must always write this down and then you will never forget it. So Jessica, I hope you are writing this down because I'm go I've got a few examples that I want you to work with with me. So he says an acid is a proton donor. And they also actually ask you for a definition when they ask about a proton donor or acceptor. Let me just fix this. I'm saying acceptor and then I type something else. It's an H plus acceptor. acceptor in the presence, mm, proton donor, no, I made a mistake here, I can't multitask, it's a proton donor um, of H plus ions, and this is in the presence of a base, there we are, presence of a base, and you'll see how I refer to these two definitions as we go along and I answer Jessica's questions. So, uh, Larry Brown said theory says, a base, a base is a proton acceptor, is a proton acceptor, and he says they accept the H+, plus. this is where the acceptor comes in, they accept the acceptor, and this is in the presence 
in the presence of an acid. So one thing to remember, we've got two theories, Arrhenius' theory and we've got the lowry bronsted theory. If they ask you to define each of them, they are not the same, make sure you define them as said. Now, Jessica's question says, she wants us to do more examples on acid-base conjugate pairs. So Jessica, I hope you've written this down and you're gonna see how I answer the questions or how I identify the conjugate acid-base pairs based on these definitions that I've given you. So, the first example that I have, uh, well, the best example to actually use is sulfuric acid. So, I have H2, SO4, and then we put sulfuric acid in water, which is H2O. That shows that it's a reverse reaction. Now, I want us to take us to grade 12, to grade 10 first, before we can then move on. Now, remember, if you put sulfuric acid, it must, because it's an acid, it'll have to donate. Look here. An acid is a substance that produces hydronium ions and it must form this. Sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. So we're gonna have one H plus, move away, and this is gonna be HSO4. So what happens here, this H will go na 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 na, and then it will sit on this H2O. This then becomes H. SO4, and what did we learn? If we lose an H+, plus, we identify that by putting a negative there, plus. Now, I have this H+, plus that is going to attach itself to the water molecule, making it an H3O. Now, we've added another plus, we identify this by putting it there, like date of bonds. Just wanna go back to this side. Sulfuric acid is an acid. Now, you see what happened? It lost an H+, plus. And what did it do? It formed an H3O+. Plus. So we're still on the right track. And that's then according to Arrhenius' theory. Just going to remove this and I'm going to show you how we now identify what's going on. Let's identify what we're working with. This is an acid. This is a base. Now we know everything on this side will then have to be a conjugate. So I always tell my children, write out everything like this conjugate, and then you're going to fill up what everything is. Conjugate. Now, I'm gonna, what did we say happened? The acid donated, donated. Let's go back to the theory. What, what does the theory say? Um, according to Larry Brown's theory, an acid is a proton donor. It will donate that way. A base is a proton acceptor. So the acid, which one donated? It was the sulfuric acid. Which one accepted? It was the water, and that's where I get it from. So my water has accepted. It accepted. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to only focus on the blue part. Let me use blue. We're going to look at the reverse reaction. If we have HSO4, and we want to take it back to H2SO4, what must happen to this one? This H3O must give away an H+, plus and it must be left with H2O. So this H3O+, plus is going to do what? It's going to donate. It's going to donate an H+, plus, and the H2SO4- minus is going to accept this H+, plus so that it can become H2SO4 again. So this one accepts. This one accepts. Now, I've already identified that. Just gonna remove this, and then we're gonna put what is what. Now, I want us to think. If H2SO4 was an acid and it donated, but in this case, it accepts. What, what is it? What, when something accepts, we said it is a base. So this is the conjugate base. Now, in this case, we have the water that accepted, and we say a base accepts. Now which donated, we know that an acid will donate, so this is a conjugate acid. And that's how we identify the two. Let's do another example for, just for Jessica. Uh, let me just leave it there so you can actually copy it. So the next example, I've found one, let's take this one. Let's take HCO3 minus plus H. 3O plus. So already with this one, you can see that they've started with the right-hand side of the equation and not the left-hand side of the equation. So be very careful when we come to that. So, and then they've given us that it was H2 
CO3 plus H2O. So now let's write H2CO3 is an acid. Water is a base. According to the Lowry Brown set theory, an acid will donate an H plus and the water will accept the H plus so that it become it's so that it can become an H3O plus. And when this one, when the H2CO3 donates an H plus, it then becomes an HCO3 minus. Now I want us to think about what we're doing. Starting with this reaction, moving forward. This one, if I look at HCO3 minus, for it to become H2CO3, it must accept an H plus from the H3O, and this will become H2O, it'll accept, it'll accept an H plus, and what does this one doing? It is donating, so it'll donate H plus. So this is, we can say then this is um, let me write it like this so that it doesn't confuse anyone. So it's like this. So if I look at this side, now this is depending on how they've given it to you, but what I would do, I would say this will then be my base because it is accepting. This will be my base because it's accepting. This will be my acid because it's donating. And these are my conjugates. Conjugates. So. If you feel like it's going to confuse you, you can do it the other way around, uh, then fix it up, or you can do it like this. So if HCO3 minus as the base needs to accept the H plus so that it becomes this, means it means here it is a conjugate acid because from H2CO3 it must donate so that it becomes this one. And then the H3O plus will give away the one. So if it is an acid here, it must be a base here because from H2O, it must accept one of the H2. Remember, it'll break up into an H plus and it'll be HCO3 minus. So that's for, that's some of the first steps. So remember, first go through your theories and you've seen how I use the theories going back and forth to who says we must donate, who says we must accept. And then that is then how you can identify if something is an acid or something is a base. Now, it does take some practice, but it really gets fairly easy.